Welcome to the Metamorphosis Show, the live broadcast craft, live broadcast created to help you improve the way you think, eat, and move. My name is Thomas, and I am live in Venice Beach. It's another beautiful day, and today is the winter squash episode. And so what I'm going to try and do is give you what I have found to be a fairly fail-proof method for preparing this stuff if you're sort of scared away from things like this just based on their appearance which I don't blame you uh, like how the hell do you cook these things you know this is a delicata squash and while it's beautiful to look at it can be a little bit intimidating so now is a time of year when there are all kinds of squash available at your local farmers market and uh, look at that one, that's honey nut squash, this is just beautiful. And um, how do you do this? How do you make it delicious? And most of all, how is it so easy that a monkey like me could do it? Well, you need a couple of things and I'm gonna go through each one of these and try and make this as simple as possible. I'm gonna go slowly. You should be able to knock out this dish in probably 10 minutes. Uh, I'm gonna try and make it a little bit more detailed so you know exactly what I'm doing. I have, let me just, well, I guess I'll start with the squash and then I'll talk about the spices, the fats, and everything else that goes into it. So this is a honey nut squash. You can see this is actually left over from yesterday and the seeds have already been taken out. And what I'm gonna do, first of all, see this big, ridiculous, uh, garish bowl? This bowl is going to house all the ingredients so that I can then mix them up um, with oil and everything else before I put them into the glass baking dish. If you try and do this in a baking dish, it's not really deep enough. It'll be an absolute circus. I've tried that. You don't want to do that. So first let's uh, talk about the squash. So this is, here's, we, here's our uh, honey nut squash. This is delicata. Um, and this is a butternut squash, all completely different, different flavor profiles. Um, and for the most part, you can eat the skin, right? You can, there's so much good stuff and fiber and vitamin A and vitamin C and winter squash. Um, I encourage you to leave the skin on. Now with the butternut squash, you'll see most people removing this after they roast. Um, I'm gonna leave it on this time. I'm gonna see what happens. It can be, a, it can jack with your stomach a little bit if you're sensitive to such things. So keep that in mind. And I can't tell you what it's going to be like because only you know that. So I'm going to start this, uh, start this process now. Take the top off of this. I'm going to cut this squash in half so that I can then remove the seeds. And I'm going to do that with, it's beautiful, right? I'm going to do that with this spoon. Seeds come right out. And... In a lot of applications, once you've removed the seeds, you could just roast these things just like that uh, with some, you know, just, oh man, even salt and pepper is delicious. But I'm going to do something a little bit different today, a little bit more elaborate, but in terms of flavor profile, but still pretty easy. So there's your uh, butternut squash. I'm going to cut these into, let's say, one inch chunks. And hopefully you have a decent adult knife for your cooking because you're an adult. And if you're a child, well, good on you for watching this cast and, and learning how to cook like one, an adult that is. So these are gonna be in roughly one inch chunks. I'm gonna put these into my bowl and start the process. Um, you know, a lot of people worry about the ends I'm not one of them, but just for the sake of what most people do, I'll get rid of them. So again, the skin can stay on or come off completely up to you. I've never actually eaten the skin, but I ate the skin on all these other ones yesterday. And I think that with a decent amount of roasting time, it should be okay. It's not that thick compared to some of the stuff we ate yesterday. So this is the Delicata. I'm gonna cut the top off again. Cut it in half. Look at that. Kind of awesome, right? You could probably save all these seeds and roast them. Make a little snack. I'm not doing that today. 
And honestly, I don't really like eating seeds. I did when I was, you know, younger playing baseball, I guess. There's not a lot to do in the outfield in Little League except eat seeds. Oh, and it goes without saying, I, I guess it doesn't actually, nothing does. But um, any questions you have about this, this whole process, just let me know and I will get to them. I usually spend a half hour after I get off the live just sort of going through the, the questions, answering them, linking to other stuff, if there's anything that's appropriate. So here we go. This looks roughly the same. I guess you could, you know, be a stickler and make sure that every little bit of that pulp's gone, but I don't really care that much. You know, I think it's all going to get pretty dried out in the roasting process anyway, in a good way. So here I am with my one inch pieces of the delicata. Actually, maybe I'll be able to do this in, in 10 minutes as well. I don't really like to do anything that takes much longer than that because who has time for such things? This is the honey nut squash and the story at the farmer's market was that this was uh, developed by, oh man, was it Cornell for a particular chef? I can't remember. It could have been David Barber, but that I could have just completely made that name up. I don't know. So here we're finishing up the squash cutting now, and uh, it's relatively easy. I don't think this is like technically challenging for anyone. The onion, I'm going to do this in roughly the same size chunks. So maybe I'll go right through the middle. We'll go one there, across there. This is really poor knife technique, by the way. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed that. But it's, it's weird to be cutting here. Normally I would, I would be standing and maybe I should do that just so that you <laughs> don't pick up any bad habits from me. But I think I'm making it work. Just please don't cut your, yourself doing this stuff. So red onion, I did a half red onion. I did a half white onion. Those are gonna be really nice, contribute to the flavors nicely. Here I have some old beat up sad looking garlic that I found at the bottom of our vegetable bowl. And I thought I would use it up. I hate wasting food. I bet you do too. But most people I know are wasting a ton of food all the time. So this is my call to all of you to please stop wasting food. Only buy what you know you can consume because Man, I think it's in the millions of pounds of food that gets thrown away every day. And if you've ever been to Whole Foods and seen all that prepared food, I know that when I was living in Austin, the word on the street was that they just threw it away every day. I hope that's changed. I know that there are a couple of good organizations out there that are you know, now working on trying to get the food from grocery stores and distribute it in some way or at least repurpose it. But man, it's... I don't think there's another country in the world that wastes as much food as we do. So try not to contribute that to that rather. So here's the garlic. I just did, you know, like th this would be say three or four regular sized cloves. And I'm just cutting it into moderate sized chunks. And all this stuff, this is really just a base. I'm showing you, okay, you're, you're dealing with winter squash. You've got onions, you've got garlic. Those are three pretty easy flavor profiles. Do you want to use a Vidalia or a Walla Walla onion instead of a white one? Sure. Do you want to use leeks? Uh, leeks are a bit of a stretch. Do you not want to use a red? Do you want to use the, the onion of your choice? All this stuff is completely up to you. The ratios, how much you're using, that's really going to be based on your, your personal preference. So there we go. That's our That's our squash and onion Let's see if you can see that pretty easy so now i'm going to make this taste delicious and this is where it actually gets a little bit interesting if you're used to pretty standard salt and pepper type uh, flavors so the key to making this squash taste awesome and a little bit exotic is some curry powder some cumin coriander seeds, which I'm going to crush, and I'll show you that in a second, 
Uh, a little bit of cayenne or a lot, depending on your preference. A bit of cinnamon and then salt and pepper. We'll mix all that up with olive oil to coat everything evenly and then we'll put a huge dollop of coconut oil right on top that will soak in as we roast. It's going to be awesome. So, you know, I could give you exact measurements for this stuff and maybe I will. Let's say a teaspoon of curry powder. Okay, that was easy. That was probably a pretty big teaspoon. <laughs> And cumin, let's go with uh, let's go with a teaspoon as well. Okay, that was easy. All this stuff's easy, and that's kind of the the point. With cayenne, eh, it could be tricky, right? I like mine a little spicier. I don't know how you like yours. Cinnamon. lightly dusting the cinnamon it's all kind of light salt and pepper and then we'll do coriander and i'll show you how you do the coriander seed i don't like to do coriander powder it's sort of like the same way i feel about coffee i like to get whole beans and then grind them i feel like you get so much more power out of the flavor it's so much more pungent when you keep things whole before chopping them up. And I think that things just break down, right? Isn't that what oxygen does? Sort of just immediately start to break things down. Uh, I just did pepper. Here's some salt. I like a lot of salt because that's just how I've come to be made. I used to hate salt when I was a kid. And now after hanging out with enough chefs, I know that, uh, it's a little bit more crucial than I used to think so. I'm not saying it's the most important thing, but you do need to know how to salt stuff. So here I have a tablespoon of coriander seeds. I don't know if you can see that. And right now they're whole, so what I'm gonna do is crush them up by rolling over them with this rolling pin. And First, I was smashing these with this thing, and you can do that because it does work, but it's just as easy. Oh, can you hear that? It's just as easy to roll over them and smash them up this way, and it's a lot less caustic. <laughs> so I'm rolling over these seeds, and if you've never messed with crushed coriander before, coriander seeds man it is such a fantastic flavor it feels really fresh and vital and somehow exotic if you've never really had it so these are all smashed and i'm going to further chop them up because i want the pieces to be very small even though i've smashed them now with the see if you could see this here comes the close-up Now they're basically chopped in half, right? They're sort of chopped in half. And that's okay, but I wanna make them even smaller so that when you actually bite into them, um, you're not getting a whole like seed. Just pressing hard enough that they don't all fly out all over the place. And Please respond with all your ideas for these winter squashes as well. If you have a cool recipe, I would love to know about it. But this one I've found, I haven't talked to anybody who ever said, man, that wasn't, that just wasn't that good. But if I've never said it before, and I probably haven't because this is the first bit of food that I've talked about on the Metamorphosis show, everything starts with good product. So, if you have some old ingredients, I don't care how good you are technically, it's only going to reach a certain point. You know, but if you have something that's incredibly vital, and Ellie was talking about this in the yoga, in the yoga episode, the more vital your food is, the more powerful it's going to be. 
the more delicious it'll be. You can let the ingredients do the work. And I have been, uh, I've been pimping that for a long time. And I also think, oh, I'm going to show you real quickly. I'm going to hold that thought. I also think that there it is. I'm going to push this right over the top. I also think that you should probably eat things that are seasonal wherever you live. If it's growing at that time of year, you should probably be eating it then. And if it doesn't, for instance, if you live in Minnesota and bananas don't grow in January, as far as I know, that's the case, you probably don't need to be eating a, a bunch of bananas. And the same thing goes for things like winter squash. I mean, if it grows, it's at your farmer's market and it's happening at that point of the year. I think you should get whatever nutritive benefits and enzymatic benefits you can get from this kind of stuff. And I don't have any proof. I don't have any data that eating seasonal fruits and vegetables is the best way, but it makes a whole lot of sense from a connectedness standpoint, a holistic standpoint. If you view the world as a connected organism or series of them, it only makes sense that you would be eating the stuff where you live when it grows. Okay, so we're gonna go a few glugs of this extra virgin olive oil right over the top. Just to mix all, all these spices up and make sure that they're evenly coated on all of the vegetables here. All right, so I think I can go through this. We have curry powder, cumin, cinnamon, coriander seed, salt, pepper, a little bit of cayenne, and now extra virgin olive oil. And we have delicata squash, honey nut squash, and butternut squash. And if I do another episode that focuses on winter squash, which I may because there are a bunch of really beautiful ones, I just happen to use leftovers today. Um, I'll name a bunch of other varieties as well because there's all kinds of stuff at the farmer's market right now. It's really, I get excited about it, but that's because I'm a little bit nerdy about fresh food. So all pretty well mixed up and I'm gonna show you the finishing touches right now. Here's our glass dish. We're gonna put all this, oops, eucalyptus is raining on my parade. All this stuff is going right into the dish. That's pretty much gonna be a single layer. And we're gonna finish this by putting a big dollop of coconut oil right on top, which will make it extra unctuous. Love that word. Who doesn't love that word? So I'm going to go say how about three tablespoons. See that? Just a big dollop of coconut oil right on top. Did I say coconut butter? I might have. I've been saying weird stuff lately. Okay. So here we have the finished product. I'm going to come around the side so that you can get a closer look. Look at that. Pretty awesome, huh? Well, maybe that's better. So that is going to go into the oven for about, mm, let's say, here, let me, let me move so I can finish this off. So that's going to go into the, <laughs> that's going to go into the oven for around an hour at 400. And the best way to know if it's done is if it tastes awesome. Is it tender? Um, do all the flavors feel really good? Is the skin tender enough to eat? And if it needs to go a little bit longer, let it go a little bit longer. But that is winter squash. It's pretty fail proof. I mean, I, again, I haven't had it not turn out well yet. So give that a try. Let me know how it goes. Thank you for watching the 30 uh, the 30. This is the Metamorphosis Show, and it's sponsored by the 30MinuteAdvantage.com, which is all about improving the way you think, eat, and move. 
with cold water therapy, uh, farm to table nutrition, man, meditation and 30 minute workouts. I really appreciate you watching. And tomorrow I have a special guest. His name is Antranik. You may have seen him on the Reddit body weight forums. He's dominant over there, an incredible teacher. It's gonna be a really good time. That'll be about 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. Thanks again. Don't forget, you have so much power. Use it wisely.